Welcome, welcome, welcome to Reaching New Heights with Troy Bell, City Manager, City of Muskegon Heights, where you get to know what you need to know so you'll be in the know. We're excited uh, to be back on the air today, and thank you for everybody uh, that uh, sent in comments and uh, questions and remarks. And so I appreciate the good feedback um, and uh, those that are of you that are enjoying the show and those of you that had suggestions on things that you would like to see, uh, like to see us do in the future. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get started real quick here because I want to welcome in a guest, um, the Honorable City Manager for the City of Grand Rapids, Mr. Mark Washington. Hey, good afternoon, Troy. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for being willing to join us today on short notice. Uh, um, I know uh, you've got a lot of stuff going on, exciting times, so, and I know you got to go quickly. So can you give us a brief overview of the, of the festivities? Well, I, I appreciate, uh, first of all, you uh, inviting me and in, in your leadership in here in West Michigan and ability to collaborate on not only things in our community, but also things in our profession as manager. And, um, you know, we both together share a common thread, not mm -hmm. fraternal thread. I want to point that out. <laughs> but uh, Not everybody can be perfect. <laughs> no, not everybody can be first. 19 no <laughs> right. um, mm -hmm. But but we, we share a common thread in, in that we are both members of uh, the National Forum for Black Public Administrators. Mm -hmm. We focus on developing uh, leadership, first of all. Right. And secondly, doing it um, intentionally with people of color who many times have not had the opportunity for leadership development within the highest level of public administration and within city government, municipal government, council manager, it's either uh, as in a city manager or city administrator or county administrator. And I just did an interview a few weeks ago, and uh, the interviewer pointed out that less than of all the cities we have in, in the country, thousands of cities, mm -hmm. um, less than, you know, 5% are led by African-American city managers. And so right. NFBPA is an affiliate of the International City County Management Association and serves to help develop public um, officials, public administrators. And they're having their annual conference here in Grand Rapids from March the 30th to April the 3rd. And uh, it's going to be downtown here, hosted at the uh, DeVos Place. And uh, we're looking forward to everyone coming. want to invite the public to attend some of the sessions that we have here. They're going to be great public policy topics. Yep. And uh, I'm excited about it. I've been uh, mentioning it on the radio show for the last uh, uh, four or five weeks, um, just letting everybody know that we are uh, blessed to welcome this uh, prestigious organization to uh, the west side of Michigan and um, how important it, this organization is to maintaining and supporting and recruiting uh, people of color to leadership roles in local government. And uh, you mentioned uh, that, that this is a common thread, but uh, you and I have had shared some of the same mentors uh, in this organization, um, other than you being one of my mentors that I appreciate. <laughs> Yeah, no, there, there, there are some great uh, leaders. Uh, national President Dr. Uh, Calvin Jameson is my fraternity uh, brother. <laughs> is presiding uh, <laughs> over the uh, session here. Um, mm -hmm. our na national Executive Director for uh, ICMA, Mark Ott, um, mm -hmm. is um, also um, someone that influenced my career coming through the ring. Mine as well. Mm -hmm. He's also been in West Michigan, both well, Michigan guy. He managed in Rochester mm -hmm. Hills, Kalamazoo, uh, as well as Grand Rapids. He was right. a uh, to the city manager here in Grand Rapids. Um, and so there's a lot of great people. And, and like this week, we'll be talking about major public policy issues like um, economic recovery, uh, how to manage through the pandemic, <clears throat> you know, your personal leadership uh, skills. I'm going to be on a panel in about... 45 minutes talking about public safety and housing, 
uh, we'll have the magic man himself, Irvin Magic Johnson, who mm -hmm. will come and speak to us about community redevelopment and investment and community development as he, you know, obviously he's done great things on the court, but it's really his legacy lately has been his off the court work yes. in community transformation. And now with this culture of startup and venture capital, capitalism, mm -hmm. angel giving, he's, he's doing a lot of investment that's helping with the infrastructure of communities and creating entrepreneurs. And, um, you know, there are, there's other topics uh, around uh, mobility and, I mean, just the, the gamut, the gamut of all the public policy issues will be up for the discussion. And, and then we're, when, we don't just talk about work. We're, there's an expungement fair mm -hmm. on Saturday that will be here in the community. Oh, and, that's fantastic. And, yeah, with the clean slate uh, laws that we have now, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to, we have, almost a hundred i think they're trying to get a hundred attorneys to volunteer their time pro bono to help people with all the pre-work and all mm -hmm. the application and so if you have any any need for uh, assistance in doing that work um, the conference is uh, trying to give back to the community and doing that work on saturday you know, I, I remember uh, when I first uh, went to work the mayor's office in Indi Indi Indianapolis, uh, Magic uh, Johnson was the first franchisee for Starbucks. You remember back when uh, they, they allowed franchises and uh, he wasn't just uh, putting up stores, he was changing communities. And so I'm excited to, to hear what he has to say and to be able to uh, be part of that. Um, because he's done some amazing things on the court, but like you said, uh, more particularly the long-lasting, sustaining, st sustainable impact he's having on our communities. And so, and, and another, I mean, this is Women's History Month, and I think what we have learned uh, not only has there been inequalities among women, but when you're a black woman, African American woman, mm -hmm. you have uh, this stigma of both being black and being female sometimes right. in leadership roles. And there's an, a powerful elected town hall official conversation with some powerful speakers. Uh, we'll have uh, Nicole Killian, who's a congressional correspondent from uh, CBS News. Mm -hmm. We'll have the Honorable Sh uh, Sharon Hurd, who's the president of the National Black Caucus of Local Elected Officials. Right. Uh, we'll have the Honorable Victoria Woodards, who's the mayor of Tacoma, Washington, mm -hmm. and the Honorable Angeline Butler, who is the mayor of Forest Park, Georgia. Uh, and our Honorable Mayor Rosalind Bliss, who will also mm -hmm. in Grand Rapids be part of that discussion, um, along with the Mayor of uh, Savannah, Georgia, and uh, Franklin County, uh, Commissioner from Franklin County, Ohio. But very, very elevating uh, gender uh, equality is mm -hmm. also a role of our organization. Right. And, um, you know, it's just a, just a great, great opportunity for people to come and learn and develop. Well, I had shared with the audience in the past that I had the pleasure of serving on the board of this organization, and I never thought that I would be in the city uh, or um, in the area to welcome the National Forum for Black Public Administrators uh, in the community where I'm working. So uh, I, I know you got the, uh, the the Benny for having it in Grand Rapids, but... Um, <laughs> That's close enough for me. I know. I know. And so we need you to con do whatever good work you're doing mm -hmm. today. Finish your show and uh, pack your bags and mm -hmm. hit the highway to get here as fast as you can. Oh, yeah. Uh, so well, we're looking forward to seeing you in the city. Looking forward to being there. So I'm on my way. All right. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll, I'll tell them you're coming. Okay, I appreciate you, and thank you so much for joining the show and right. um, and all the work that you do. Yeah, likewise. Right. Th thank you. Take care. Take care, brother. All righty. So um, I'm glad that Mark was able to take time out of his schedule to, to be able to uh, join us and give uh, – I know you've heard it from me multiple times, uh, but it's always nice to hear it from an esteemed colleague like Mr. Washington, who's doing some amazing things in uh, Grand Rapids. And 
all those things that he's doing um, have a ripple effect that benefit us all, um, the community in general and uh, people of color. So um, I was uh, excited when he was able to um, join the show. But uh, I, let me reiterate, the, it, uh, the conference is going on uh, beginning this evening and running through to Sunday. Uh, go online at uh, nfbpa.org. That's N is in November, F is in Frank, B is in Bravo, P is in Papa, A is in Alpha.org. Um, take a look at the conference schedule. Um, the uh, schedule includes a lot of great uh, seminars, workshops, uh, speakers, uh, but also uh, some great entertainment too. And so if you have an opportunity to um, jump over to Grand Rapids and be part of that, you definitely will not be disappointed. So come on out. Uh, so with that, I'd like to move on in the show and welcome to the show um, a Reverend Kai Guy, uh, as you all probably know. Um, uh, Kai Guy is the uh, pastor of uh, one of the local churches here in Muskegon Heights. And I'm waiting for him to come in. Let's see. There we go. All right. <laughs> uh, welcome to the show. So um, I, I invited uh, Reverend Guy to, to join the show, uh, not as a uh, Reverend Guy, uh, but as our uh, new, uh, newly hired, newly um, mentored. I guess you started on on uh, just the past uh, other day as the deputy public works director for the city of Muskegon Heights. So welcome to the show, sir. Thank you. I, I realize this is a little bit preemptive because I want to make sure that you have an opportunity to be introduced to uh, to the council formally. Uh, but I know that you've already hit the ground uh, and you're already uh, you hit the ground running. And yeah. I, I thought this was a perfect opportunity on the show to be able to introduce you to the community. Um, thank you for applying for the position. We advertised for this position uh, for a, a number of weeks, and uh, um, I was excited to see you put your hat in the ring and, and make it through the interview process and uh, come on board. Because as I said, when I uh, was hired as the city manager, I was really wanting to emphasize um, the effort to be able to hire people from the community in key roles to, uh, that are part of uh, turning the city around, the city government around, and the community. So welcome to the city of Muskegon Heights as an employee. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank mm -hmm. you for having me. Well, um, and I, I wanted to give you an opportunity. I know you've only been, been in the role for a couple of days to share with the community some of your thoughts and goals and visions uh, for the role, for the position, for the organization as the section chief of uh, public works? Well, um, I want to say thank you, first of all, for to the, um, uh, I already call him the A-team. Mm -hmm. A-team already down there at DPW. The A-team, uh, we had our first uh, meeting today. Everybody's all uh, hyped up and we all good. And um, I want to give them uh, a, a real good shout out uh, today, um, because I've seen already in a couple of days, their hard work, uh, what they've been doing. And I just want to let them know that I appreciate them already. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, they, you got, I got a lot of good people, uh, that's work that that's working with me. And they, 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 they looked at me a little sideways at first, but now we are all together. So very so, good. Uh, uh, and, I, and I don't know that the community, is aware um, in detail that um, 2008 we used to have 30 some odd uh, employees in public works and now we're down to you know, 12 14 people in public works and still being asked that the city didn't shrink you know still four square miles uh, the challenges increased the equipment uh, was not replaced uh, uh, has not been replaced and so we're fixing on 
20 year old, uh, 15 year old pieces of equipment. Um, so it's a heck of a challenge uh, what we are asking public works to do and uh, bringing you into this equation. It, uh, it's a, uh, a mammoth uh, request um, to come in and figure out how you can provide quality services to the community um, with uh, less manpower and aging and missing and um, equipment. Well, um, first of all, I, like again, I have to give it out to the, uh, the team. Um, the, the people that uh, Muskegon Heights has hired and, and those, those guys uh, who've been there a long time, mm -hmm. they make it happen with nothing. Right. Um, so I, I hope our community will give us time um, to, uh, we, I got some expectations. My expectations is to make everything look excellent, but it's hard to do excellent work with uh, machinery that's malfunctioned um trucks that we can't we can't carry all the people that we need to carry uh mm -hmm. so um they're doing the best they can so uh my, my my charge is is to try to uh stay close enough to you to push you to find us some money so that we can um get the proper tools and the proper equipment for uh, the people to do for our team to do the best job we can they're doing great with as you stated limited uh equipment and malfunctioning equipment and not only that older equipment mm -hmm. and they keep it running they know right. how to drive with it they know how to work with it mm -hmm. uh they they doing such I, I i don't know how they do this um, as, as good as they're doing mm -hmm. with the stuff that we have right and like you said 2008 was a blow but we're in 2022 now mm -hmm. and they ain't complaining about what they have but i can see it in their faces and their eyes like kai if you can get us a better truck if you can get us a lawnmower if you can if you can get us a, a snow plow we can we can do uh, a great job so mm -hmm. and, and and as you said we're going to work to see how we can address those things definitely um our challenge of course is the the lack of funding yes. but we, we should be able to do something and i think um uh, it's going to be an incremental process and we're going to have to take baby steps, but I'm sure that uh, after a few of those steps, we will be able to take some leaps and bounds and be able to, to, to bring those things to the table. I think we good as long as we stepping in the right direction. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that's good. Um, and, and just bringing um, attitude and, and the right attitude back like, mm -hmm. um, Getting, uh, I want to, uh, as, as as the kids say in basketball, I mm -hmm. need some unis, and I, I want our department to look like Muskegon Heights. So, uh, trying to get some new uh, mm -hmm. and 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 look look the part, um, right. dress the part, so that the community can say, all right, them, them those those people uh, work for DPW at the Heights. You know, right? So, uh, give and, us a sense of pride, and then they don't have to tear their clothes up tear their clothes up and um and, at work and and but then they give them a sense of pride of who they are and and give us a uh a visual presence mm -hmm. in the community and to let everybody know who who we are we just gotta we guys just gotta make sure that the the right thing because i don't want to you know i haven't worked in the in the sun with them so i don't want to get them a sweatshirt and they out here doing um patchwork with with a 400 um degree kettle in 90 degrees mm -hmm. and i done got them uh sweatshirts so i'm talking to them and see what they want but right. you know me i feel like this you look good you play good so i mm -hmm. want them to look good and, and feel good about what they're doing but i don't want them dying out there in a, a sweatshirt that i've picked <laughs> right for right to have on a a good t-shirt or something some boots well, I, I have been out there uh, with them a few times, and I, I can second that emotion. You got to have the right, uh, the right clothes. You know, uh, what's the saying? Saying there's no bad weather in Michigan, just bad clothing selection. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. So, um, I want wanted to touch a little bit on um, on your background because um, I know uh, people might know you from the pulpit but uh, not know um, much about your academic 
uh, credentials. And so um, I think it's important for people to, to hear, you know, a little bit about your academic uh, credentials and your background. Oh, okay. Um, well, you know, I, I have to say this. I am a proud graduate of the Stephen Heights High School, 19 class of 1989, you know, arguably the best class that ever uh, went through Heights. But, you know, every class from Heights going to say they're the best, but 89 we are. Um, I graduated with my bachelor's and my master's from Cornerstone University. My bachelor's is in business administration, mm -hmm. I have a bachelor's of arts, and then my master's is in business leadership. Um, and at this point in my life, I don't know why I did this, but at this point, I am um, enrolled and working on my doctorate in ministry at Payne Theological Seminary in Wilberforce, Ohio. Excellent. So you're feeling a little bit of uh, my pain working on the, the doctorate at Purdue. So I yeah, I, I, I don't know how you you with all the stuff you do every day. I don't even know how you have time and give it uh, as much effort as you have to give it uh, because it's a lot of work and people think it's it's easy, but it's a lot of work. It is, but it's by the grace of God. You know? It is. It you is the grace of God. On you more than you can handle. So exactly, exactly. I hold to that steadfastly. Yeah. Well, I, I was once I, I I got a chance to see your application and your resume. You know, those are things that I did not realize about you. Um, I, I I was excited to see that because what I was looking for, particularly with DPW, is somebody that had interpersonal skills, that had uh, business background knowledge, because I'm looking for us to up our game on the administrative level, to be able to put che checks and balances in place, accountability systems in place, uh, to, to really uh, bring to the table the documentation that allows us to be able to collect the data so that we can make better decisions on purchasing equipment, better decisions on uh, servicing equipment, better decisions on how uh, we do preventive maintenance throughout the community, uh, not waiting till something breaks, but um, no, having a sense of how long things last and proactively replacing those things to be able to decrease the cost of uh, our, our materials and equipment based on planning and training. Um, that, that, and that is all big and um, that, that's a, a, something that's in my wheelhouse. So I have to do that and I have been doing that forecast and all that as a pastor of a uh, local church. So you have to do all that. You have to cut costs and still put out a great product every week. So um, I, I, I understand that um, that part of the, the, mm -hmm. the, the job and, and leadership. And a part of and, and that part of leadership, right? And I and I guess you know, uh, thinking about it, when you have to shepherd a whole congregation, uh, a lot of that is part of your your daily uh, your daily routine. Yeah. So even even now, uh, what we what we have to do at, at DPW is build relationships. Uh, we work better when um, we have uh, when we have good relationships. Mm -hmm. So. Um, my, my my plan is is um, and and I they, they taught me a lot in a few days you know mm -hmm. it's it, it's some smart people so it's it's, it's no sense of hiring to your um, your strength you hire to your weakness mm -hmm. and so I um I, I believe that our weakness has not been uh, the workers or um uh, their ability to to get the job done because they know how to do it they know how to do it so mm -hmm. uh, i i'm i'm the i'm the one that can go between and figure out some things while they getting the job done right and that's what's going to make us a, a a good team and a good a good staff of people for mm -hmm. the community because of um uh, i think you getting me hired to their their weakness mm -hmm. and and so now we are uh, stronger all the way around because when i tell you they know they know what they're doing they know what they're doing and so well, and they and they're asking me to know what i'm doing to help them get it done and they're pushing me and i'm pushing them already so 
I think it's going to be good for the city. Uh, I, I, I agree 100%. Um, uh, I've always thought that we had good people that love this community, that cared about this community. We just needed to put them in a position where they could, um, where they could succeed and yep. shine. And it's just a matter of making some of those changes and adjustments to put the systems in place, to put the structure in place, to allow them to play to their strengths. Yep. Um, yep. And I, and like I said, I honor, I honor them and respect them already. They, mm -hmm. they already, uh, got it. We all got in trouble yesterday. We all got in trouble. Uh, yesterday, um, mm -hmm. and so we all felt the pain, but we we took it, and we we made we made adjustments, and um, we we the eighteen, mm -hmm. and uh, tomorrow morning we're gonna talk about it and drink coffee uh, together in the morning and before we get out. So mm -hmm. I, I'm I'm excited about uh, my my part. Excellent. Well, I, I think it's um, important to also mention I had promised council that uh, we would do an assessment of uh, public works and to that end, uh, bring in an engineering firm to be able to do an analysis mm -hmm. on the facility because the, the facility clearly uh, needs some love, some TLC. Yep. And I'm looking for them to give us a report, to do their assessment and give us a report on the condition of the facility modifications, upgrades, needs with regard to the facility, but also with regard to equipment, manpower and staffing. Um, do we have the uh, adequate number of folks to do what we need to do? Do we have the right competencies in place to be able to do what we need to do? Uh, do we need to train up um, or do we need to hire in for specific competencies that, that we may have gaps in? Um, and then looking at our systems, processes and procedures and, uh, and give us an assessment of um, how our system uh, systems uh, are today and what we need to do in order to get to the appropriate structure of processes, systems and procedures uh, to be as effective and efficient as possible. And so I see you're coming on board at this moment, the optimal time to be able to uh, in a sense, build the plane as we're flying it. You know, you heard that adage. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I, I've heard that. Um, and, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so I, I appreciate that we we hit the ground running, uh, and um, we 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 do. They already have some systems that's uh, that's in that's there, or mm -hmm. we have some systems that's there. We just got to go back and start implementing implementing those ones that worked, mm -hmm. and. Um, I think that the team is okay with removing those that didn't work. And uh, it's going to be good to see how the firm uh, lines up with what our thoughts are and, 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 and look at our needs uh, as well. And I, and I fully believe that as they begin to provide us with some of their, the results of their assessments, that we'll be in a position to, to um, assess that and uh, move forward on implementation. Uh, there's a mountain of stuff that needs to be done, but um, I think between you being on board and the existing staff, that we're in a position to make it happen. Yeah, I think we, we already, uh, we got a plan to already uh, do some housekeeping stuff um, to, to make our presentation look better when you when you pull up on us so we 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 gonna we, we we're gonna do our best to uh do uh, a little house cle cleaning and housekeeping and make everything look good when you uh come to our our facility excellent so, and i hope i hope the um the council as they're looking at us coming i hope they would uh drive down there come in for a while so that they just don't see that we're uh we're, we're just asking for different things, but see the need um, that we, uh, for the need of the things that we're asking for. It, it's, it's some simple stuff. It, it ain't nothing big. It's just stuff that we need to make our building look good, uh, make our city look good, and, and, and they hold the key. Well, I also want to thank the, the union because uh, in the uh, brief uh, meeting that we have with the union representatives, 
Uh, they seem to be open and receptive to um, the effort that, that we're putting in collectively to move uh, our public works department to the next level. And uh, that's not always the case. Not every union uh, is receptive to the potential of change. And so I want to applaud them and compliment them on, you know, having an open mind and being willing to to look at it um, pot with a positive approach. Uh, I thank you for uh, mentioning that our, our union, our union, and our union guys are, are great. Uh, they 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 boisterous, and I like that. Um, I like that because I want to know what you what, what you think, and we're not gonna fall out um, about mm -hmm. it. You know, uh, as I told him today, uh, in families we fight, but we we still go out and we together. So mm -hmm. uh, our, our union guys, they 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 really good. And they here's the thing that I like about everybody down there, they love that place. Mm -hmm. So they care about um, uh, Muskegon Heights, and I I just think that some, somewhere along the way, the community, the 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 the, the, the council, um, uh, the city, just forgot about them, but want them to do everything right, but never says, "Hey man, that was a good job." Mm -hmm. <laughs> or never say thank you. You know, those things go a long way just to say, you know, man, I seen y'all out here cleaning up Broadway. Uh, thank you. Uh, I ain't going to throw nothing out the window while y'all out here cleaning up. Right. You know. And it's always nice to get a honk of support. You know, people, when you ride by and uh, you see the hard work that's being done, you know, uh, just a beep, beep. Um, to say thank you, uh, that's always nice, and um, I, I encourage the the community to support you know the work that our DPW is doing. So, so you know, I, I want to back up a step and 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 um, talk about your role because um, yes, I've charged you with uh, bringing in the administrative piece and um, charge you with changing the look of. DPW, which you are, I love the fact that you are already on it with, you know, uh, improvements in the way the facility looks, as well as improvements in the way the vehicles look, and what you just mentioned about uh, about new uniforms. You know, I think that's, I mean, that's spot on with what what I was hoping that we would be able to do at, at the minimum. But back up a little bit. We used to have a director of public works and we used to have a director of water filtration and uh, as a result of some of the retirements instead of just replacing those positions um, the community may not know that we restructured um, our public works and utilities departments we combined them into one department and now we have a, a utilities and public works department one department and within that department we have two sections the water filtration section and the public work section. And uh, uh, see, I, I, I want to call you Pastor Guy. Mr. Mr. Guy <laughs> is heading up the public work section. Um, and instead of, uh, um, uh, so we eliminated the director position, replaced it with a deputy director position, combined it, the deputy director manages the public works section and within public works, we now have a, a foreman two instead of a foreman one, which is one bump below what we used to have. Um, that will allow us to hire more people into public works. This position was created a year, uh, maybe a year and a half ago, and we've finally been able to fill that position. So public works has been operating in uh, an under undermanned capacity in terms of the leadership team. So I'm excited to have you now take that role uh, running the public works section. Now within the public works section, you have uh, water distribution. Those are the guys that are responsible uh, and ladies that are responsible for uh, the sewer pipes, the water pipes, the turn-ons and the shutoffs, as well as um, the, the ladies and gentlemen that are responsible for uh, the, the other division, which is streets, 
uh, cemeteries, parks, public facilities. And so um, I want to make sure that now that the city, uh, at least those that are listening in, uh, we will be posting an org chart um, here pretty soon uh, that will lay that out so that you can see it visually and understand who is responsible for what. Uh, Mr. Allen, who was a guest on this show previously, uh, I guess about two months ago, is the director of utilities and public works. Uh, he was formerly the director of the water filtration plant. And so within that organization, we now have Mr. Guy as our deputy director responsible for managing the public works section. So good deal. So what I want to, what I'd like to do is segue into the aspect that over, overlaps with uh, public works. And, as, and uh, you've heard me say it, and I've said it before um, in the community, the way that our community looks ultimately falls to um, the public works department. It starts with our citizens though. It starts with the community because we each have to take responsibility for our properties. We each have to take responsibility for the city. Uh, yes, we have folks that are hired to uh, help us uh, manage the trash, but um, this is our community. And if we see trash on the ground, we need to be uh, feel compelled to, to, to pick it up, even if it's not ours. Understanding that we are dealing with a public works department that is less than half of what it was before. If we all chip in and if we all work together, we can make Muskegon Heights beautiful again. And so um, we, I think this is a nice overlap with the campaign that's beginning on April 1st, uh, which is uh, beautify the heights, fight the blight. Um, and you've heard me talk about it on the show before, but it's not just about um, uh, a slogan. Uh, what it's about more importantly is a mindset. The mindset that I think is shifting in public works with um, the new leadership that uh, Mr. Guy is bringing to the table. Um, you're gonna see billboards going up about this. You're gonna see postcards coming out about how we can all be part of beautifying Muskegon Heights. Um, things as simply as cutting your grass and raking your leaves, making sure that your trash can is not overflowing, making sure that you bag your trash before you put it in the bin putting it out there on the day of or the night before, not, not leaving your trash out there for two or three, your can out there for two or three days. You know, those types of things make a difference in the way that our community looks and the ability of public works to be able to uh, step in when those um, residents may, might need help, when those residents might miss a beat in terms of what they should be doing to pick up tires or to pick up mattresses here, there, um, to, to cite it, to notice it, and then send out an invoice for it. This is going to be how we clean up our community. And I, I, it'd be remiss of me not to mention parking vehicles in the glass. I said this and I say it over and over again, after April 1st, no more parking on the terrace, no more parking in the yards, you gotta park on the street or in the driveway or in the garage or else you might get a citation and get towed. So with this campaign, I anticipate people might say, well, you know, what we spent on this campaign could be used to hire another DPW worker, or it could be used to uh, extend uh, the paving another uh, 50 feet, or, or it could be used for a hundred other things that, um, you know, might seem like they're more important. But what's important about this campaign is about changing a mindset. And I think that is more powerful than one person or 50 feet or 25 feet of pavement. If we come together as a community and prioritize the way we look, the way we operate, you're going to see a huge momentum shift in Muskegon Heights. And so I think it's a nice segue, uh, the role that Public Works has in leading uh, this campaign of uh, beautify Muskegon Heights, be beautify the Heights, fight the blight. Um, Mr. Morrow Inspections has put together a beautiful package of PR work to get the word out, what the expectation is, and now we just need to make it happen and uh, implement it. 
So uh, I want to welcome you to that team and also extend the hand to members of the community if you want to organize um, and get together and help with the cleanup effort that's kicking off on March 1st with this campaign. We have, a, and you may not have seen it yet. Have you seen the big trailer that, that we have down there at DPW with the- uh, Yeah, with the, I've seen the big trailer, but I wanna add to, to, mm -hmm. to something. I know you're doing a campaign, but can we have the citizens if uh, to, to, to uh, gain their respect and let people know this ain't a dumping city? You don't mm -hmm. bring everything and dump in our city. Right. Uh, we've spent a lot of my last couple of days not only filling potholes, but uh, cleaning up the dump sites. Mm -hmm. So um, if you see somebody dumping, take a picture, um, get the address. I mean, get the uh, license plate or if it's you, stop it, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. get a tag. Um, because I don't think we should live, if we're going to beautify our city, we shouldn't let nobody come and dump in it. And, That's right. and, and we, um, I, and, and like I said, I want to hold our guys, uh, accountable and they're holding me accountable. So, um, respect, respect, the, respect the job, Res, respect the guys who are out here, the, the ladies and gentlemen who are out picking up these mattresses off, uh, Keating and Wood Street and all this. So mm -hmm. if that campaign is going to work, Help help us uh, by reporting it, and then we'll see if we can get um, something done when our, our citizens report that people are dumping. We got to be able to knock on their door and, and give them a citation or take them to jail or something if we can find right. it. You know. Well, we do have, I'll remind everyone, we do have a thousand reward courtesy of 1037 The Beat. Um, for any information that would lead to the successful prosecution of people who are dumping. So you see somebody uh, and you can give the, the uh, police department a call and give them the information and uh, get that reward so uh, we can stop people from dumping in this community. So uh, I appreciate you uh, bringing that point up because, uh, and, and more often than not, it's people coming from outside the community but we need to create that accountability and we can't public works can't be everywhere all the time to be able to see this and capture it. So, um, we need the community to help. Um, those of you who are bringing on board the are participating in the ring doorbell campaign, that's helpful as well. Um, because, uh, when we have instances like that, when we find uh, dumping sites, we can always go back and look at the footage and, see the truck that drove down the street that had that sitting in the back uh, of the bay before they dumped it at the end of the corner at the vacant lot. So if we all, uh, if we're all in on this, there's no, no reason and no way that we won't be successful in up and uh, lifting the heights. I mean, that's what reaching new heights is about. So uh, just to, to catch some of the comments in the um, in the chat, uh, yes, we can do a quarterly update of uh, initiatives, and that's something uh, that will be coming with a, a revision of our website. Uh, we're, we're in the process of uh, bringing on board an up, upgrade of our website. Um, so those things we can push out um, as part of the uh, part of the upgrade of the website. Um, she's asking for a quarterly report, uh, uh, update posting initiatives and accomplishments uh, to keep the citizens informed. Um, we yes, April. We definitely do that. And and, and uh, I think the uh, accomplishments will not only be good for the citizens, but also good for uh, my team. Staff, that's right. Yeah, my, my, it, it will, it will, it will uh, be good so the citizens can know and everybody won't think that they just sitting around all day uh, mm -hmm. at, at shelves and everything. So um, I, I, that, that's that's good for us. Uh, and and we, we definitely do that. Mm -hmm. We definitely go uh, post that. And, and even though we might think that the buck stops at uh, DPW, um, we also have to understand again that we've got limited staff and limited equipment. And that's why I'm asking both our police department, our fire department, uh, all the departments to be part of the effort to catch people, uh, to identify issues, to identify problems and feed them back to us so that we can address them. 
Um, you may have noticed that the street lights, um, uh, the consumers, the high hi hat street lights on Peck and uh, on uh, Broadway are, are now all on. And that's uh, due in part to citizens calling in and reporting those lights and the police department at night catching them, the fire department catching them and reporting them. So when we work as a team, we are much more effective and efficient. Um, let's see. And uh, listing the dump sites at the city's page so that we can support the effort of the city so we can identify those. I mean, I know if you're on that block and, and that dump site is, is near you, you know, but it's nice to have a community effort by identifying those things. Uh, Ms. Ross has uh, added that a calendar of events is currently being put together along with initiatives as well. So yes, we um, have wor started working on, I've mentioned this before, putting together a calendar of all the wonderful things that we're doing in Muskegon Heights and also including things like when is the leaf pickup start and when does it stop? Um, when does the when do the parks open uh, for the season and, and when do they typically close? Those types of things are are included in the calendar of events and uh, that uh, Jennifer Ross and Kaya Thornton uh, and their team are working hard on putting that together as well as implementing some of those events like Juneteenth and the Street Fest. So, and I also understand that there is an upcoming uh, in June, um, a, a fishing event. Um, so there's a request in for that down at Mona Lake and I know we have scheduled in July, I believe, the festival in the park. So all of this will be captured in that um, calendar of events so that the better awareness of the things that are going on and dates that are critical. So once the calendar is completed, we'll post the calendar um, on the website as well as in uh, Facebook and we will have brochures that we'll be able to share with um, within the community and outside the community because i think one of the assets i've said this many times one of the key assets of our community is our people the city of friendly people and the events that we we host and conduct it puts that on display i mean puts it on blast this is the city of friendly people and so we need to make sure that we take advantage of our assets and that we uh, promote our assets. And that is what we can do through the events and that calendar is a part of, of promoting our community. All right, I think we touched on um, all of the, the comments that are in there now, in addition to all the congratulations for uh, Mr. Guy and his new role. Um, what I'd like to ask uh, to wrap this up before we conclude here in the next five minutes um, is, you know, you, you obviously, um, uh, Pastor Guy, have been a, a member of this community for many years, even though you might have escaped for a short while. Um, uh, run away, I should say. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and come home. Um, I think it's it would be valuable to to hear your perspective, having been a resident and a pastor, on the transition of Muskegon Heights um, from where it was when you were growing up to where it is now, and to where you see us going in the future. Uh, five minutes won't be enough. Time. <laughs> I know, yeah. I know that's unfair to put you under the gun with five minutes left. With, with, with how great our um, community was for us growing up. Uh, we, we could go from the west side to the east side um, on our bikes and we could be out all day. Um, mm -hmm. We would play football in the streets so it wasn't no potholes. Um, our, school, our, our school had so much pride. Mm -hmm. Our city was a city of of pride and people worked and 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 made money um we lost a lot of jobs we lost a lot of we lost our pride a lot of people moved out didn't come back i'm one of them i just happened to come back uh people lost faith 
um, in our community. People lost faith in the church. They've lost, they've lost, they've lost faith in our um, civic leaders. Um, it just lost, just lost faith and 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 mm -hmm. and, and, faith and hope, and hope. And so, at this point, what I would hope that we would, um, and and people have forgotten how to love and forgive. Mm -hmm. I know that sounds churchy, and but that's who I am. Um, but if we don't get to the point where we we get back to faith, hope, and love, mm -hmm. um. We'll never be who we uh, need to be. We'll never go back. And I don't want to go back. I want to go forward. Right. I know a lot of people want to go back to the old. I don't want to, I don't want to go back. I want to be greater going forward. Mm -hmm. So we we gotta change, we gotta change some of our mindsets and our and our thought process so we can be better going forward. Mm -hmm. And if they done it before. We can do it again. We can do it again. You're right. We can do it again. We just got to have the right mind. We got to be. Uh, we can't be stuck on what happened uh, 20 years ago. It's not going to happen again. Right. 20 years ago, uh, 25 years ago, I didn't have a cell phone. Now I got. A, it started off as a mobile phone, mm -hmm. a car phone. Now it's a cell phone, mm -hmm. and I take it everywhere I go. Now right. it's a smartphone. Mm -hmm. but I don't want to go back. No, none of us really have the, well, my mom does and, and a couple of her, her people, <laughs> they have house phones still hanging on the wall, di different mm -hmm. things, but those things are in the past and we got to work for the future and be great in our present and mm -hmm. be even greater in our future. Right. We have to have a reckless passion for better. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it's, reaching new heights is about. You and you can't live in uh, in frozen success. Mm -hmm. You can't live in frozen success. One trophy doesn't mean you're a champion. All you you won that one championship. You mm -hmm. I want to win some more. Right. I want to win again. I don't just want to win one game. Mm -hmm. I want to. I want to. I want to go. So I don't. I don't want to live my life in frozen success. I, I want to let that go and, and and get some more successes. Right. Well, I appreciate you from uh, for uh, taking the time uh, to come on board, and I'm excited to introduce you to the community and your new capacity and your new new role. Um, I think uh, as we uh, begin to build our leadership team going forward, you know, we had to take a little respite there because of COVID, but I think uh, now we're in a position where we can begin to make some things happen. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm confident that we will and that the community will see it and that we'll create momentum towards reaching those new heights. So thank you for joining the program. I look forward to having you come back in the future so we can talk about not what we, we're going to do, but what we have done and celebrate those successes. So I can't wait. Uh, welcome can't to wait. the team. Thank you. Right. Shout out to the Dream Team, the DPW. We the Dream Team. Watch us. The A Team, the Dream yep. Team. <laughs> we the Dream Team. We right. the Dream Team. Well, thanks again for tuning in, for clicking on, for watching Reaching New Heights with Troy Bell, the city manager, city of Muskegon Heights, where you get to know what you need to know so you will be in the know. And 1037 The Beat, be blessed. When smoking gives you COPD, you learn to lie a little bit. <laughs>